First of all, John, uh, welcome to Falkirk. Um, how does it feel to finally be here? And um, I know you've been here for the last few days, kind of getting started. How does it feel to, to to get everything done and be here finally? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, a, bit, a week uh, here now. So uh, all go, all go. It's a, a busy time of the season. You know, people think uh, the coast season there's nothing getting done, but uh, you're now planning for the new season. And the way that we're going to end up is very much dependent on the next few weeks and who we bring in and uh, who we can manage to bring in. Uh, the recruitment side of things is uh, massive right now and I'm sure you can understand and appreciate the amount of agencies getting in contact, uh, this player, that player and you know, I've got the next best player since sliced bread, but uh, that's not always the case. Uh, my experience tells me that. So been in the game a long time. Uh, and I know that this period coming up is vitally important. So the first week has been extremely busy. Uh, obviously, chatted with a, f a few of the existing players that are, that are contracted for you know the, the season coming. Uh, some still to catch up with, but obviously been uh, talking more so with agents and uh, players uh, looking to, to come in and uh, entice them to come to a Falker Football Club. So a, a lot of work going on behind the scenes in, in a short space of time already and a, a lot planned as well, but um, before any of that, what were your first impressions of the club to begin with? Yeah, it's a, a premiership uh, you know, facility. It's a premiership club in, in waiting. Uh, so that is the... You know, that's the motivation, that's the excitement to come in here, is that the infrastructure is here. Uh, stadium is magnificent. Uh, they've got a you know a really really good gym. Uh, they, 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 compared to some places, the changing rooms are like massive. This situation here, we are a warm up, uh, uh, pre warm up for going out. Uh, guys can do their foam rolling. There's plenty of space here. They can you, know, you probably can get a touch of your ball in here as well to an extent before you before you go out. Uh, just little things like this that make it like. Uh, you know, separate from other clubs. Uh, so, you know, we've got we've got a coach's office here, and we've got a manager's office here. But you've got, you know, you can be involved in the coach's office. You know, the, the infrastructure is is all here. It's uh, you know, you can see the stadium. Yeah, the, the park's taking a little bit of uh, criticism, and it has probably got another season in it. Uh, but I don't think it's so bad. Uh, played came here. In the Scottish Cup and played, and you you know you could you could play football on it. So you know, we've uh, well, you know if the park is replaced in a year from now and it's got a brand new surface and up to date surface, it'll be amazing. You know it'll be amazing. That's uh, that's the one thing that we probably look to try and uh, hope, hopefully that can get take take place in a, in a year from now. Yeah, but yeah. Very impressed, very impressed with uh, the, the, the whole structure here. Uh, staff are very good, the people that have, that have met up to now, you guys and, and everyone behind the scenes are all very welcoming, all very helpful, where they're all uh, pulling in the same direction. Everyone's got to try and get the, get the club moving in the, in the right direction. Uh, we know now uh, who's going to be, well, we're still waiting on between uh, Queen's Park and Airdrie, but we know that Dunfermline is going to be in the league and one more team to, to, to make up the, the 10. So we, we all know that it's going to be a really, really exciting league, a big league, uh, big clubs in the league. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to the challenge, but certainly the infrastructure is here and it's a, you know, it's a great place to work. And you, you, just going back to, to the start of that, uh, the answer you mentioned, uh, the, you know, that Falkirk is a, almost a, a premiership club in the waiting, um, as it were. And you spoke to the press earlier this week. Um, you mentioned the potential of the club. Um, that's one of the, the draws that kind of brought you here. Um, so the club, you said, has that potential to get back to, to the premiership. Um, but obviously, you know, it could take a little bit of time. But how, how big a challenge do you think it's going to be to, to get there? Well, it obviously, it is a challenge. Uh there's a few I've tried up already. Uh, so, as I said, 30 odd points behind Cove, 25, 26, 27 points behind Airdrie. That's, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of points. 
So there's a lot of catching up to get done, and I know COVID's going on, but I just like being yeah, relating to the season past. Uh, there's a lot of work to get done, uh, so that's that is key. So it's a, it's a big challenge, but we believe we can make it happen. Uh, it will not be down to the lack of work. It will not be down to the lack of detail that the players will will receive. Uh, it won't be down to the lack of preparation and knowing not only about how we want to play, but how the opposition is going to play. Uh, every fine detail will be uh, given to the, to the players or a bit of information to help them get that result on a on a Saturday or a, you know you know whenever whenever we play games. And that's the way that we work. So the way that we work will be important to the whole thing going forward, uh, from discipline, setting standards, making sure everyone's you know. Simple wee things, but raising the standards at the football club, caring about the football club, recognising you've got a responsibility as a job. It's not just a, ho a hobby, it's a job. You've got to be in here. You've got a responsibility uh, at a football club this size that you have to stand up and be counted. You have to raise the bar. You have to have pride in the way that you go about your business, the way that you're going to dictate uh, how the football game is going to go. You know, We've got to start to dictate games here. Uh, not get in a situation where the opposition are waiting on us doing badly and then, you know, taking a dip. We need stronger mentality, you know, we need to, uh, not easy, not easy, but that comes down again to the recruitment and who you bring in and bring in players that may have a, uh, a strong mentality to change, uh, you know, and to encourage uh, others around about you to be similarly of the same uh, Elk, you know, the same uh, attitude to fighting for things, to actually going out and fighting for things. Things are not just going to be laid on the plate. This league is not about that. You've got to, you've got to work so hard in this league. You've got to stay focused. You've got to make sure that yeah, for the first minute to the last minute, you're 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 right at it. And uh, we need a squad that's strong enough that when we have to make substitutions, you know, the player going on is equally as good uh, and is going to go on and, and make an impact and make a difference. So building the squad is key to how we're going to do next season. Marcel and Paul, we will work our socks off every single day. We'll put everything into it. We'll prepare the team. You're hoping you're going to get a, a break away. Injuries, you know, injuries will determine a hell of a lot. If you lose key players at key times of the season, then that will have an impact. But you're hoping uh, you get a little bit of break there. Unfortunately, we start the season with... Paul Watson, uh, one week after his uh, cruciate operation, so we're not going to see Paul for a, a good while, uh, which is which is a blow. Uh, but it'll be good to get him back when, he, when he's ready. Uh, so he was in yesterday, seeing Rachel the physio. So it was it was nice to nice to meet him, uh, one week on from his operation, and so his rehabilitation can can start. You know, it's obviously going to start very slowly, but it'll build up, and it'll be good to get him back. However, you know, all the guys that come back in pre-season, we need to set the standards from day one, from the minute we come in. We recognise uh, the guys that have been here now long enough to realise what it's all about. If they didn't realise before, they know now. Uh, myself and Paul, Paul's played here. You know, I've managed teams that have come here uh, and we know that, yeah, there's high standards here and we've got to rise to the challenge. But... The, the challenge ahead surely helped by your past experience. Obviously, you've you've won this league twice before. Um, you know how much of a good stead is that going to going to stand you in for the upcoming season as well? Yeah, I think a lot, I think a hell of a lot. I think the experience of being over the course and distance it's uh, it's a massive advantage. I know what it takes to win this league. I know what it's like to go up to. Montrose and play up there to go up to Peterhead, you know, to go and play Clyde, you know, your, your, your obvious ones are the ones that are uh, your, your, your Airdries of Airdries in the, in, the, in the league, you know, they're done family now in the league. We know we know what it takes to go and win in these places and it's no easy and you're going to have to change your uh, the, your outlook. You're not going to always be able to play Sulky Soccer because the league's not always about that. Yeah, we do. We want to, we want to play Sulky Soccer. We want to play a nice, steady football. We want our football to be something that the fans and the, and the stands can actually identify. They can see what we're doing. But there's going to be days where it's roll the sleeves up and work your socks off and outwork the opposition, outfight the opposition because unfortunately the league one is about that. You know, it's not always about uh, getting the ball out and 
and making like 25 passes and, and scoring at the end there, that would be great. But if you don't win the first ball, you don't win the second ball, you're not good at the ball, the ball's gone towards your goal. And if you don't defend properly, you're going to lose goals. So we've got to get everything, everything right. So what I'm saying is, I know exactly what it's going to take. I know what we're going to have to do when we go to a certain place. Uh, and of course, we need to make sure the players know that. And they've got to be adaptable. You know, it can't just be the one thing. They've got to realise on a windy day at Montrose, for example, you've got to you've got to fight, you've got to roll the sleeves up, you've got to get in their faces and make it really, really difficult. And uh, that, well, that goes for going up to Peterhead. Again, it can be a lovely day up there and it's a, it can be a beautiful pitch up there, but you can go up there and it can be blowing a gale right down that pitch and it's no, it's not going to be silky soccer. So we, we realise horses for courses. There'll be games where you might not want, you know, your most uh, flairish type of player. It might be a game where you've got to get, you know, physical, you know, players in the team for a particular a particular game and they might do well and then the next week they're no in the team because you need your flair player back in the team because you'll need to create some kind of like uh, a great through pass or a great cross or you know a great strike uh, so you know horses for courses recognizing who will be able to play and these particular conditions and what we need to do in the football match so as much as we look to create a style it's got to be you know something that's uh, positive, something with an end product. Uh, yeah, exactly that. You know, it's not a matter of passing for the sake of passing. We've got to be able to go forward and penetrate and entertain. You know, we want to try and entertain. Uh, and I'm sure we've heard this before, but I think if you look at the teams that have been involved with, uh, we got a lot of plaudits last year for our, uh, the way we played. You know, uh, we were second in the championship for a long time. Finished third, just got pipped by Dundee, and a lot of these teams were were actually quite openly admitting that you know Wraith Rovers were the, uh, one of the best football teams in that league. And so we want to play good attacking football that you're going to hopefully enjoy. But we realise that every Saturday there's another loving players out there in the opposition who's going to try and make it difficult for you. And we know that when they come here, they get a lift. The opposition get a lift. They get a lift by coming into the stadium. Uh, all right, so the surface is you know, it's not, not the worst by any amount of means. It, it could do be getting replaced, yeah. But they, they get a lift by coming here and they actually... They're motivated much more and we have to recognise that everyone's got to recognise that and we've got to stay together everyone's got to stick together and we need to back each other you know we as uh, staff and players need to entertain the fans and we need the fans to back us all the way and it'll know we'll be playing sailing but we do need that and we need a bit of patience uh, we a new team coming in new management players have got to respond to us and uh, you know we hopefully can get that going in the right direction and uh, you know we're, there's no doubt we we know what the the ambitions of the football clubs is. Uh, is my I don't want to manage in League One. I do not want to manage in League One. To be honest with you, I don't want to manage in the Championship. I want to manage in the top league, and uh, I want to do that with Falkirk Football Club. So yeah, can't put a time scale on that, but uh, you know that's my ambition. And obviously, this for this upcoming season, we are in League One, um, and the potential that you're bringing to do well in this league um, isn't the only thing that kind of people are um, feeling hopeful about, but it's also the fact that you know how to get it done in the league above as well, following a promotion. Uh, obviously, you got promoted with Wraith Rovers um, the season after. You managed to take them up to the, the top end of the championship, um, which is you know a, a major a major achievement in itself. What would you put that down to yourself? How we work, how we work, how we plan, how we prepare. Everything's doing to that and getting the players obviously to buy in, the players wanting it to to work, wanting to be part of it. Players like to, they do, they honestly, I mean, they, they, they do they like to play good football. Most of them do, you know. Uh, the amount of players that want to get out of the teams that just bind the ball alone and want to come to, to, to places where they play good football and you get a chance to uh, entice people to come to your football club when they know the, the style that you're going to play. So it's the way we work, the way we work on a daily basis, setting standards, uh, making sure in training that we're on it, you know, we're not cutting corners, we're very, very professional and we'll no stand for any slackers, anyone, you know, if you're not on it, then, you know, yeah, we, we, you know, we'll give you an opportunity, you know, we'll, uh, we'll make you aware of what were the standards that we're looking to uh, achieve and require and we would hope, hopefully give you that opportunity to do that and it'd be up to you to, you know, step up to the mark. So it's all about standards, it's all about, yeah. Uh, 
racing the bar, yeah, been over the course and, and done it. So uh, there's no reason why we can't do it again. And up into the championship, it's doable. You know, it's doable. We were we were very close. You know, we were very close. Even in the playoff, you know, I don't get people know we. Uh, to be going on about it, but we scored a perfectly good goal against Dundee. We were one 0 down, and we we scored a perfectly good goal at half time in the playoff game uh, at Stark Park. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been so different if we had got the, the goal against Dundee uh, in the in the playoff semi final uh, at Stark Park. We scored just before half time, and it was you know as TV evidence has shown, there was three players playing our player on side, and it would have been a big difference to go in at one each at half time, coming back for one 0 down on the ascendancy on the night. Uh, Dundee went and scored another couple of goals in the, in the, in the game at Starts Park. We went up to Dens Park, won the game 1 0. So that made up a big difference. And it could have been so different. We could have been, you know, playing Kilmarnock in, in, in the final playoff game. And who knows, we could have been uh, up there. So it's doable, you know, it's doable to go from League One into the Championship and then Championship into the Premiership. Now, at the moment, that's like pie in the sky. And the opposition will be all getting a bit wound up uh, because of that. But, you know, it, it, we came very close to going from Championship to, 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 to Premiership. Part of this all this year, came out of League One and they finished fourth, they're in a playoff and they had an opportunity to get themselves into a situation where they could have been playing, you know, St Johnston, uh, you know, if they won their games to, to get to stay or to get up into the Premiership. So the opportunity is there. All the leagues in Scotland are all generally very, very tight. Uh, you could almost predict next season is going to be equally as tight. Uh, and so you'll go through good spells and you'll go through spells where you have a little bit of dip. And we've just got to make sure that we respond when we... If you lose a game, you've got to respond and make sure you're back on it and, uh, you know, bouncing back because it certainly won't be plain sailing. But uh, I believe that... Uh, you can do, you know, going from League One to a Championship, going up with momentum. It's a momentum that you go up with. When you're winning more often, uh, you go up with that belief that you're going to beat anyone. And the mentality is there. Now, going up with a club like Falkirk, with a fan base that we have got, and if you can go up, uh, you'll get so much back in. And that would create much larger season ticket sales which would generate even more money for the manager management team to then you know put back into the the, the staff the playing the playing staff which can only enhance you and that's the way that you've got to try and build you know we try and build uh, the team uh, keep improving the team and every year getting better and better and working hard and learning and that's the only way that we can do it and then having you know, self-belief, confidence, uh, starting to believe in ourselves more, getting that confidence, getting that uh, momentum, belief, everyone together working hard. These, these are the ingredients in, in success. And just looking outside the, the playing side of things, um, you've brought Paul uh, Smith in as your assistant, um, someone you've worked with for a long time at different clubs as well. Um, you know, you guys are obviously a team that work well together. Um, how much of a boost is it to have him come work with you and also um, to have someone alongside you who's played here before um, and knows all about what it takes to, to be at this club and uh, and how to get the, the fans on your side? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, no, we have we worked together uh, for a long time now. Uh, we've got great trust between the two of us and that, that's what you've got to have in any kind of like partnership is trust and... You know, I, I trust Paul uh, immensely and we work well together, we sort of dovetail with our strengths. Uh, so we like a, a happy environment, you know, we pull all crack jokes with the guys and have banter with the guys, you know, but when we're serious, you know, when we go on the training pitch, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for good professionals to, to turn up in training and, and, and train properly. But, you know, uh, you can't be... You know, there will be moments for uh, a laugh and a joke and having a good atmosphere and a good environment that the players want to come in and work and, and be happy coming in and working. And we think we create that as a team. We think we, we create that. And, of course, uh, bouncing each thing, uh, you know, every day we'll make decisions regarding training, bouncing each other on players. Right now, 
that's all we do now at the moment is recruitment. And it's, you know, opinions, what do you think of him, what do you think of this one, that one, this one, we're on it constantly. Uh, going and meeting players here, meeting players there, costing fortunes on coffees all over the place. Uh, so we're, we're, we're on that right now and we will be throughout the season. It's great that Paul's played here. I think it's great for the fans because you recognise someone who's played here. Uh, Paul was here in the, the Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown days. Uh, Husty was there as well. Uh, the ginger god. And, uh, you know, I know them well. Um, Jim and Billy took me into hearts. Uh, no long after they left here, actually, in, in 95, uh, around about September of that year, I got involved with the under-16s at hearts. They gave me an opportunity to go in there and I worked part-time with under-16s before going full-time in 98 after Hearts had won the Cup, after Jim won the Cup for, for Hearts. So I've got a lot to thank these guys for. And, of course, Paul came to uh, Falkirk and played under Jim and Billy when they were here, and they had great success. Uh, I'm sure a lot of good memories there. So uh, we're hoping that there's some sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, Good omen there that Paul's been successful here and did well here, and uh, hopefully that's going to stand us in good stead going forward uh, this time around. And just finally, I'm, I'm sure the fans are counting down the, the days until the start of the season and looking forward to, to seeing you out there on the touchline um, and showing what you can do. Um, do you have anything to, to say for the fans um, just before we, we finish up? Yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully there's going to be players that are going to be on that pitch and they'll be showing a bit more of what they can do. You know, I'll be, uh, uh, you know, emotional and motivated on the pitch and passionate, you know. Uh, but players will need to be doing the business on the pitch. We can help them out so much. No, I mean, I'm delighted to be here. Myself and Paul, we're delighted to be here. We're going to go give it everything we've got. I um, just ask you to be patient. Uh, you know, the, the early days, we'll need to get the team playing. And that doesn't happen overnight. But uh, yeah. in advance, I thank you for all your all your help here with regards to if you've been buying season tickets. Please do. It can only help myself and Paul uh, put that money back into the uh, the, the players. Uh, Come in, trying to bring players to the football club. And I know it's really really difficult times right now. Uh, but if you can support your team and you can. By season ticket, hopefully we can produce the goods and we can all be, you know, happy this time next year. All right, John. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, hopefully we'll be speaking to you again soon. Thank you.